call the uh, where are we? Finance committee. I'll call the finance committee meeting to order at 5.09 p.m. for March 22nd, 2022. Um, let's start with minutes. Do you want to um, recommend last? I think just make a quick motion to open the select board meeting. Oh, yes, just, sorry. Yep, that's ahead. okay. Yeah, so um, motion to open the select board meeting. Second. Thank you, Trevor. Thanks, Carolyn. Okay, now you can move. Move that we um, accept the minutes as submitted by email. Yeah. Any discussion? They're all here, so we can just vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Uh, next order is something I keep forgetting to do. Um, Planning board is reviewing the bylaw on accessory apartments. It's not going to be for this um, town meeting. It will be a, for a future town meeting. Their first meeting will be sometime in May. Is anybody interested in sitting in being a finance committee rep for this accessory apartments review? They haven't set the date. They'll start in May. So it'll be after town meeting that they'll start looking at it and it's i believe their meeting is may 9th julie what it's may 9th may 9th um no that's the planning board meeting but not the there's like a subgroup or something that's oh oh that's i'm sorry meeting. and they haven't set the date yet to look at the bylaw to recommend changes to the bylaw for accessory apartments, which I think are like like a mother-in-law apartment kind of thing. Yeah. <coughs> Just how close to the beach is. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. provisionally say I'll do it, pending you know, okay. unless it turns out the meeting is. Um, I think they'll work the meeting around the people who volunteer. So, um, okay, thank you. Um, the other thing that has happened since last week, um, we had a meeting today with the nonprofits. So, Deerfield Academy, Eagle Brook, the Mint, Historic Deerfield. Am I missing anybody? were so, there. No, yeah, those four groups meant, were there yeah. and then several town representatives. Um, it was more like a meet and greet almost. Um, yeah. But the goal is to have periodic, like maybe monthly meetings to work towards some shared goals. Um, the biggest topic being the sewer plant um, up in Old Deerfield. So it was not really progress, but they were open and very interested in discussing ways to make that happen. So, um, Casey, Trevor, me, John Paturic. That was it from the town. Senior or junior? Junior. Chief Paturic, as opposed to Colonel Paturic. To report from that. Anybody else have any other meetings that they want to report back on? Okay. Um, Martha, I guess we're ready for whatever you want to bring up. Okay. Well, we what can, did you give us? We can certainly go through the additional um, the budgets that we've revised, as well as um, a couple of other ones that are here. So. We can start with the accountant's salary, and that's 135 5110. <laughs> This is <clears throat> this is off the new salary schedule. Yeah. So has have the selectmen looked at that salary schedule and have any idea what they're likely to do at town meeting? I guess 
Right, right. What was your question? Well, I believe it has to go to town meeting for approval. Yeah, always. Yep. So, you know, I, this, what's the position that the selectmen are taking on this out? Well, I mean, I think I think it was the, the group's intention to do a two year transition to this new salary schedule. So uh, that's kind of where we're budgeting right now. If it if it has to change, we'll have to change it. But I think you know we looked at the salary schedule last. Uh, hey, David. Um, you know, la over the last two years with the compensation you know plan, and we looked at taking two years to to move into the new schedule. Uh, we haven't. You know, as a board voted that schedule or anything yet, we're we're all working together as if that's going to be the plan. That. But I mean, I assume from my recollection of the past, the uh, select board once the select board had the salary schedule from the personnel board, they uh, they voted the schedule and they. That they would accept that, I guess. So the alternate would be to give it back to the personnel board and say, "Do a better job," or "Yeah, add or cut whatever." So, I, didn't we review this it? was yeah. yeah this was, was we did review already. this last year. It was the compensation plan that the uh, consultant we had hired yeah. uh, put together um, to get us up to speed, so to speak. So the salary schedule has not changed from last year. No. No, this is the FY23 schedule that she was intending us to have. And we reviewed it as a group, right? Did we not? Yes. Right. Way back yes. in May last like, year. Oh, I thought we did it in November, or December or something. Recently? Uh, I don't remember if we did recently, but I know it's the, it's the one we've all been yes. on. Yes, you did that too. Years. I don't think we, but I don't think anybody's approved like, hey, this is the one we're using. Yes, you did. We the did. The personnel board had a hearing and it was approved. The only thing that changes is, or could change, it relates to town clerk, treasurer, collector. When, when did we have that meeting, Casey? Help me. December 16th. Thank you. Personnel board had a hearing. The personnel board, right, not the select board. The select board participated with the finance committee in reviewing it before the hearing. Yeah, okay. We did. There you go. My memory's a little touched lately. Was there You're right, Julie. <laughs> taken by the select board to bring this to town meeting. I would imagine. I mean, if yeah, I mean, we everything has to go to town meeting. I don't understand the question. So I think the select board voted to approve that salary schedule for people to use in building their budgets, right? Correct. That's correct. And then it will show up as a warrant article that has to, that we'll have to and review that, that and approve as a warrant the, article. The select board has said, this is the... Uh... Yeah, I mean, that was our intention from a, like two years ago. Yep. And has been rolling along that December, way. Right? Whether it needs to be adjusted or not, uh, I don't know. But I, I think that's generally our impression is that that's where we were moving because of the the study and the taking two years to get there. And like nobody kind of we gave everyone that three percent last year, and then this year everybody was dropping into the schedule, and and that's what everybody built their budgets on. And now we're you know we're finding it's a tough year because of salaries, obviously, and and everything else. So. Yeah. Hey, every, so is this um, is this salary or is it um, hourly? Here's the real question. If you work more than 1,566 hours in a year, do you get overtime or additional? I don't get over. I just watch my my time. So if uh, like right now, I've been putting in way more hours than I budgeted for. Um, I'll be taking a vacation in May, and I'll take that without pay to, you know, so that my salary ends up so it's at, okay. being no more than that at the end of the year. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, would you consider eighty percent salary? It's seventy-five percent. Seventy-five. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think part of the reason I hesitated um, giving this to you earlier was um, 
number one, I questioned whether I should be adding hours to my um, expect, expected time here based on what, what hours I've been putting in and the amount of work that there is. Um, so, uh, but- That was my real question. It seems like you're working an awful lot, especially with is. all the grants and replying to all those, mm -hmm. the number of hours. Truthfully, not. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And we should we should have more hours. Yeah. And we have to make the changes that are happening in, in the treasurer collector's office. It's putting a little bit more burden on yeah. Brenda yes. because yeah. she's going to be right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. If you're putting in more hours, would it make sense? Just a thought, have an assistant instead of you putting in the hours. Well, that's one of the things we've been discussing um, amongst ourselves is um, uh, in our reorganization of the treasurer collector's office, maybe having the one person that supports town clerk and treasurer collector also input bills for me so I have more time to spend on the bigger things. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so it has been moved and seconded from 135.5110 at $59,897. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. All right. So um, over the last uh, day or so, I, I went back through some of the DPW budgets and so if you go to town building maintenance at 192-5400, um, I found $2,300 worth of savings by number one, just going through seven years worth of history and just seeing where we're at and what my expectations are for the, the things that I might know. <laughs> um, and then I went over all these with Chris Miller so that he uh, was comfortable, but um, we have solar credits that up until now were not applied against town, uh, town hall. And um, Jen Gannett went and had the Schedule Z re redone so that we can apply some solar credits towards this account. Um, in 2021, we spent 22,600 and something. Um, I don't know what we're on track for for this year, but I thought Kevin had initially put 22,000 in here. I thought, well, wait, let's take a couple thousand off of it. I don't know how much of an effect the solar will have, but I wanted to pull that back a little bit. And then I went back through and looked at some of the other accounts and just, I really only adjusted sewer and water a little bit based on our history. I don't think I made any ch any other changes to any other accounts here, but I was just looking for some savings that we might be able to find um, some simple savings that um, we could be comfortable with. Is it worth explaining your miscellaneous repairs off twelve thousand or twenty thousand? Right, that's that was what we had in the original <coughs> one that you um, uh, uh, recommended back on March first. I did not make any changes to that. It's probably still too low, but um, I wasn't sure that our budget could support anything more. Now, if I remember, some of that was the the, um, the grammar school building and the old congregation, the church building, right? Are they separate? It does. Uh, the, the The church building has its own separate line item okay. here, but you're right. The the grammar school building, um, the library building. Town Hall, the police um, are all in this, and then you have a separate line for EMS, also the EMS building. The note I wrote down it says we spent seventeen thousand last year for maintenance for the repairs. Yes. We have a motion. I move. Second. 
Any questions for this session? Productions are good. Productions are good. All right. Um, so it's been moved and seconded for 192,500 to 85,500. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. All right. We did get the final budget for Franklin County Technical School. Um, that is 320-5410. Um, I had plugged in that figure previously, so it's been in summary for a while, but I did get word um, yesterday that it was passed at this dollar amount. I think we discussed this earlier, the, the major, oh, you got a second, okay. Um, the major reason for the increase is that we went from 18 students to 29 students. Um, I know at one point in time, we, we passed out these sheets that indicated um, our percentage increase and some other things. Uh, it did go up 67.53%. Um, Deerfield's cost per pupil is also the highest of any participating municipality. I don't know why that is, but I'm sure it uh, has to do with the needs of the students and, and probably the ability of Deerfield to pay to a certain extent, right? Isn't it based on, there's a section of it that's based on our equalized valuation. Yeah, yeah the, the budget that they, they should have sent you does indicate by town minimum amounts. Right. So you get you get some idea. Um, yes. What, mm -hmm. So so what was the number we're using again? The, the, For the assessment? Yes. It's five five hundred and forty one thousand one hundred and sixty-three dollars. Okay. Yeah. Cost per pupil went up to eight, if it's 29 and 18, went up right. to 18,660. Correct. <clears throat> Excuse me, from 17,945. That's a 4% increase per student. Just FYI. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is this mean there's been a reduction in the number of students? Well, yes. That's the general assessment. Yeah, that's within 100 bucks. And our frontier increase was very small. It was like 0.98 or something percent increase. Right. Um, mainly because we didn't have so many participants. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Do we want to, there's somebody waiting. Do we want to? Oh. No, you're just listening in, right? Do you have a comment? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody, any further questions on Franklin Tech? We kind of already discussed it once. All right, it so hurts. the move is seconded for Franklin Tech 320-5410 at 541,163. Any further questions or discussion? So all those in favor? All those opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. I That's think it's too much money. Zero one. Franklin Tech Capital? Yep, that's the next one, 320-5800. So moved. Who, who moved? I don't know. Jack skipped second. All right. Any discussion on this one? What is it? 
What are they buying? Uh, this is the, uh, it, it's a capital, the town voted five years, years ago. ago. They bought all new overhead so doors a, and front doors and in essence, it's already been approved. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. If you're Thank on you. to looking at the next phase. Um, Casey says that the hybrid still requires roll call votes. Is that right? Um, I no, went I online and read it the rules and the when, when I read the online rules it said if all members were present in the meeting they didn't have to do a roll call vote and I thought that's what you said but um, yeah just wanted to so the select board has to do a roll call vote. Have have to, have to, yeah correct. yeah because they're not all in the room okay okay any further discussion um, I do have one question yeah, why is there if this is basically paying off in a, a, a Capital expenditure already approved. Why is it going up? It varies. It, it varies. Rates 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 I think it's or... no. I think it's based on population. Oh, it might be. So it's not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it might be based on our number of EQB students too. Students, or? Some, okay. there's, there's there's something in there that it doesn't okay. stay constant. Okay. Kind of ridiculous. But... <laughs> Any further questions? All right, so it's been moved and seconded for Franklin Tech Capital at 18,561. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. There are two more DPW budgets that I took a look at and made some revisions to, and one of them is the transfer station. So that's 433-5400. Um, here, here again, I just went through seven years of history and looked at things and tried to figure out where we were at and what I felt was maybe more appropriate. Uh, I can't remember what I ended up finding for savings, but um, it went from 223, 200 down to 219, 900. It wasn't huge, but. But we're desperate. <laughs> yeah, we are desperate. And by and large, it would be nice at some point in time. I think we come close, but I don't know how close uh, to covering the cost of operating the plant. Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe I should have let that data. Uh, I, I, you know what, I had I, it set aside for the smart. last two weeks and and yeah. just did not bring it, but. It's not imperative. But last so. year we more than covered it, but that was because we had put off. Um, selling the transfer station tickets uh, stickers because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So all of that hit last year. So last year was high, but you know, generally um, our, our transfer station takes in 180 to 195,000. So it doesn't cover it completely, but it's close. We used to have a gap of about 150,000 and we've worked it down over the years. We did by cutting the budget two years in a row by fifty thousand bucks. Right to make it a more reasonable for that. Yeah. So it was like somewhere in the neighborhood of forty thousand. All right. Any further discussion? Of this? No, no, uh, it had just been under budgeted. So solid waste is really the only thing that's in that account is three quarters of the assessment from um, the solid waste district. They have a quarterly assessment that they charge three quarters of 
of that assessment is charged to this account and one is charged to our um, recycling revolving fund. The, and um, that had not gone up as much as uh, Kevin was anticipating. So I brought it back down a little bit. The other solid waste that is going up out of control is the sludge. I knew yes. you might be, so okay. you will. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's because of all those nice flushable wipes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, but we're not on that right now. So any further discussion? <laughs> <this question? laughs> okay, so it's been moved and seconded for transfer station expense at two hundred nineteen thousand nine hundred. <clears throat> all those in favor? One is monitoring for its 439-5400. You know, looking at the expended amounts, um, do we have an idea what we're likely to spend this coming year for? We I, I don't personally, but I do know for fiscal year 22, we had a contract for 33,600 and we've spent that already at this point. Um, you know, if, if there are no issues, this is a pretty simple budget. Mm -hmm. If there are issues and we have to drill another well or something like that, then we have problems. Um, but, um, I thought, if our contract was 33.6 this year, it's certainly not going to go up to 40,000 probably. So I, I thought we could trim $2,000 off of that and bring it down to 38. I, grasping at straws, but um, I thought it was a savings that was reasonable that we could make there. Additional questions? Yeah. All right, so it's been moved and seconded for test well monitoring at 38,000. All those in favor? Thanks for being us. We have a new budget from um, SAC at uh, South County EMS. And that is in tab 10. Um, somebody recommend for somebody. So in his original budget, he had budgeted conservatively for revenues and he had an operational reserve for a hundred thousand, which is what we've been doing for um, a number of years recently. But after more consideration, he realized that was um, kind of not double dipping. I don't, I don't know the right word for it, but Right, too, uh, too conservative. So he's being conservative with his revenues. If he's conservative with his revenues, he shouldn't have to have an operational reserve in order to develop some retained earnings um, that he can rely on for um, building that to go towards the next ambulance. So he took out the operational reserve of 100,000. Um, the other thing that he did was I know he went through some of his other expenses and revised them um, according to what has been spent or what he's expecting. Um, not a lot of changes there, but like for instance, medical supplies, I think he took it from 20,000 to 25,000, which makes sense because we have been over that the last few years. Um, fuel, he did make a change to that. Okay, I couldn't, couldn't remember all the, all the changes that he had made. 
but it did make a savings for us of 52,000 something um, over what we had originally voted. 52,273. Any questions or discussion? Pardon? Uh, what about sewer? Um, Right, and I don't know where he codes that to. Um, I think that is in his building occupational supplies. No, that's not it. Electric water gas. Yes. It's in that line item. That didn't change. And, uh, <coughs> Right, but he doesn't pay that much for sewer. It's not it's not that big of an expense, if I remember right. Um, I, I couldn't tell you for sure without looking at my my um, general ledger, but um, I'm question: Are they on the sewer? What's that? Is the building on the sewer? Yeah, yeah, it is. I I don't know why I, I want to say his last bill was three hundred eighty six dollars. I don't know why that comes to mind, but. Um, you know, you take that times two, so you're spending, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars on on sewer. Um, so it is in that that line item. That's right. And there may be another way to approach that potentially to even out those costs and see funding Probably. I mean, if you, yeah, because you have retained earnings that you can use. He was, I know he makes an effort to give us back the maximum amount that he can with his retained earnings. Um, so that's why the fluctuation, some years are better than others. And I think when he was here, he said that um, during COVID, uh, people were afraid to call the ambulance for, for service. So um, the revenues did go down from uh, fiscal 20 to 21. And um, that is now bounced back and then some, but um, I'm sure that's why we're not seeing as much revenue supporting the budget this year as we have in some of the previous years. What are we that just <laughs> moreover is that possible i mean um, um i've asked about you know doing that sort of thing for some of the other town projects like uh, some of the sidewalk and sewer maintenance and it seemed like some of that isn't allowed i don't know <laughs> enlighten me right it's a, it's an enterprise fund so it's a standalone business so to speak so um it has a, a retained earnings that gets certified just like our free cash gets certified. So then Zach chooses to use some of that retained earnings to offset this budget, just like we use free cash 
to offset things. So basically, he could do that. What she was suggesting at, at discretion. Well, and you know, and and if he were to um, use the same amount every year, then his routine earnings would go like this, and he could keep track. You know, um, if that's something you would like him to do, I'm sure he would he would give that some consideration. Yeah. I know the, uh, the our last meeting. The uh, in talking with the chief, the uh, the revenues appear that they're going to they're on a, a actually significant uphill climb right now. He thinks that he's going to be over six hundred thousand instead of the five seventy five that he has in his budget. Um, initially asked him if he'd just make it six hundred instead of six twenty five, but he was a little hesitant on that. Right, and and rightfully so. Dor it requires requires you to be conservative and if you're going to budget anything more than what what you've collected they 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 say absolutely no to that or if you're budgeting even more than what you budgeted last year they're questioning why you're budgeting more um because they don't want you to get in trouble just like they do with the town i i can't budget more for revenues uh for our local receipts than what we've collected in the previous year without a really good explanation so um, that's the same same methodology that they apply to our enterprise funds. Go ahead, Bob. Um, the SCEMS rental stable, stabiliza stabilization, it, I don't see it in the revenue detail. It's not in here and it wouldn't be because that's a standalone account. That's a, a stabilization fund, it's a trust fund. So that's on the town's books. It's on the town. Because, it's, it's because revenue, we're right? collecting, the town is collecting revenue from this, this, uh, the enterprise fund from, right. from the EMS. So we have, um, the town had voted that 75% of those revenues received would go into a stabilization fund and the rest of it would go into the general fund right. to be used towards maintenance. So right, so that's the rent line item for the town, the rent income. The rent expenditure is on the EMS side. Yes. So you'll see he has. I don't see the rent income. I, maybe it's there. You, just, you wouldn't because the rent income is on the town side. I'm looking at the town side. Okay. So it's, it is, it is on the town um, local receipts. It's um, local receipts. It is. Um, is it included in the rentals? It's under local receipts. And it is in rentals, yes. That's okay, correct. so it's included in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? So where's the rental on the skins? I don't see it on there. <laughs> where's the rental on the oh, there skims? It is. Rentals, you got it. 40,000. <clears throat> Oh, the rent. Okay, got it. Thank you. Right. So the rent went from down from fifty five thousand. It's not going down that much. I, um, so at one point in time, um, Skims was paying rent to the South Deerfield Fire District, and they were paying rent to Sunderland mm -hmm. for um, for the use of their garage. I don't know if they were paying lately they or not. Lately lately too. Yes. So that's why the fifty thousand. Um, they were actually paying the South Deerfield Fire District the thirty six thousand, which is exactly what the town is asking them to pay for having their their building. So the rentals on our revenue say forty thousand, so that's be four thousand that we get from somebody else for something else. We no, we we get um, about thirty thousand from the cell tower. Oh, okay. And then, oh, um, right, right. It's only 25%. Got it. Right. We no, only we get 25%. Yep. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Sounds like we're done with questions. So it's been moved and seconded for SCEMS Enterprise Fund at a total appropriated 345,693. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, aye. Mm -hmm. That's unanimous. Okay. 
So those are the easy budgets. <laughs> um, I handed out another pile, which are all budgets that are in flux. And if you want, we can start with the select board staff salaries. Um, there's no reason to recommend anything because there's nothing to recommend at this point, but we can discuss what's on here. Let's look at the, um, so you have in this um, expense detail, you put in estimates for anything that's not can you just sort of talk about what estimate you put in and what your rationale is behind that? Absolutely. And if we add, so if we add all of this up, the total is 17 million, 396, 689. And you take that from your revenue, that leaves us 57,000 and change. Correct. For anything capital that we want to do. All right. Yeah, that'll, okay. get, that'll get us it. real far. Yeah. So can you talk about the estimates that you threw in here just to cover that? In, in regards to, um, uh, yes. So uh, if you want to talk about, we can talk about some of the salary estimates. Uh, with the select board staff salaries, we had a compensation plan for the assistant town administrator and the executive um, assistant. Um, the town administrator contract is being negotiated. So right now that thing, I sh it, we're showing that level funded. Um, there is an additional line item in here for part-time admin support. Um, right now that expenditure is happening in the COVID expenses, but we will not have COVID expenses going forward. So um, that person would support uh, the admin office mostly select board office mostly with meetings because somebody has to monitor the meetings every meeting we have and um right now that duty is being shared between um, alex hershenreiter and uh, casey and jim um but there are many other needs within that office and more time is needed for someone to be able to help with the, with the evening meetings so um there was uh, a number that Casey and I looked at and plugged into the budget yesterday for uh, somebody to help with that. Whether that's Alex going forward or somebody else, um, I, that's yet to be determined. Okay. So I don't I don't know it, uh, what else there is to talk about there, but but that's that budget right now. Um, until we have um, a, a contract settlement for Casey's um, contract. So what you did was level fund from right. what yeah. we paid last year. So, so and then you, you did the same for police payroll and Police is, is totally payroll. level funded with the highway. We have two people that are on the, actually three people that are on the compensation plan. So we figured in the increases according to the compensation plan for those three people, but level funded the rest. There is on the last page of your summary, it's the last number in the requested FY23 column. Uh, we plugged in a uh, 100,000 that should cover um, the police contract, the highway contract, the town administrator contract and the police chief contract. Um, I did a little figuring um, based on what limited knowledge I have. Casey and I talked about it and we threw in that number to cover all of those contracts. So where's that? Set? That's, that's on your last page, page four. Yeah. Um, under the FY23 requested column, it's the last number, the 100,000. Okay. <laughs> I can't tell you that. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. So I have the same question, which is the, the way I was going to word it is do you think that's 
pretty close? Do you think it's generous? Do you think it's skimpy? Do you it's think it's like... as accurate as we oh. can be at the moment. Well, you know what? Based on the things I know, um, I actually came to 96,000, so I plugged in 100,000. It could be a little higher than that, or it could be a little lower than that. But it, I, I don't think it'll be far off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty close. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, I'm actually involved in all those contracts. So I can tell you that we're in that ballpark. Do you ever feel like you never know until you're settled, but are they pretty close to settling or? Uh, I can't comment on that okay. legally because it, oh, okay. everything's in executive session. So, okay. um, but yeah. it's like any union contract. You don't know until you know. Um, do you want to look at some of the others? <laughs> so if we have that um, line item, the fudge factor line item, then we could go ahead and review these budgets. Now you're saying there's a chance if it gets settled before we're done, we should put the right number in. I would hope that three of those contracts will get settled before town meeting. Um, okay. I, I didn't give away any date. <laughs> I'm hoping all four are. Okay. Question? Go ahead. As long as we're looking at that last page. Um, last week we had approximately 31,000. The cooler for Frontier Regional. Right. It, it's it, gone. It is. It was one of the capital items, even though it's going to be a completely separate article. But because it was one of the capital items, um, I can't remember if it was Casey or Julie asked, asked me to take, to take it off it yeah. so that so that there's no capital on okay. here so that we can we can evaluate That's it what more, I thought would be more objectively. Okay. Yeah. Which eats up two thirds of that into seven thousand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Half of that. Right. Seven thousand plus. You, yeah. you still have the frontier capital and uh, tech capital. Right. Well, those are, those so are assessments separate. that we can't do anything about. Pardon? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Didn't those are assessments we can't do anything about. Oh, those I didn't say they yeah. we didn't, weren't going to pay them, but is there any reason that they have to sit in the omnibus budget, I guess? Uh, that's they, been, that's been my question all along. They've always been in the omnibus budget, so that's why they're there. I, I guess it's because, is it because you really have no choice about what to spend? Correct. I mean, since we're being assessed for it, essentially. We, we initially, um, I, I think with both of those, we initially had a town meeting vote to accept the capital that they were intending to um, take on, um, the, the debt that they were intending to take on. So in, in a sense, we agreed to pay those assessments when they were uh, handed to us. Yeah. We already approved the capital project. Right. Now we're just paying off our debt. Yeah. Right. So we, we don't we don't put our our debt in the omnibus budget. That's all. We don't. The debt is in our omnibus budget. No, it's the seven hundred series is debt it's, service. It's in our it's in our omnibus budget. It's just that some of it is debt excluded, so some of it gets added directly to the tax rate. the tax levy. <coughs> All of those items that we have where we have separate warrant articles. And I guess my my argument is that these that for example the thirteen hundred and eighty five dollars for for frontier, we've already voted that that's a that's a debt excluded item as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And it's right. sitting in an omnibus budget portion. Well, it has to be. It just like your other debt is part of your omnibus budget. The funding doesn't come from taxes. It does come from taxes. The, for the for that that's that portion that's well, the, the debt it's it's debt all from taxes. I understand. I'm trying to, you know, it's that the limitations that we have being able to separate out the debt excluded numbers 
from the non, you know, the, the general operating budget uh, and looking at them separately. I mean, there's no, there's no question. There's nothing. We don't have anything to vote there, and yet they're in there and we vote them. But you do vote them. Um, it's in your tax levy on your tax levy sheet. So. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, you lead the way, Julie, what would you like to do next? Um, why don't we do what you actually suggested that we do in the first place? So, um, do you want to go through those, like, let's look at the treasurer collector okay. salaries. And, you know, it, it is, this no, is probably no. one that we could recommend if we wanted to today. I, I don't know what would change. There could be something that'll change on it, but, um, we are an anticipating that the treasurer collector position will now be separate from the town clerk position. So the treasurer collector is in here with the assistant treasurer collector. And um, I've labeled it assistant town clerk because I just didn't change it. But the assistant town clerk would now be kind of the assistant town clerk, assistant treasurer collector, and assistant town accountant. Um, but it just got left in this budget because it's easier to do that than to try to separate it out and try to figure out how much should be allocated to each other budget. Um, I don't give that person too many titles. <laughs> well, we were going to call her the jack of all trades. I think that probably will we'll cover it. <laughs> General Doug's body. Executive secretary at $5,000. <laughs> um, so um, this is where each of those people, um, the two assistants, this is where they would fit onto the compensation plan where they originally were intended to fit. And with the treasurer collector, um, we just uh, threw in step two for a start at the 3855, not really knowing where we're going to be. Uh, for sure when it comes down to actually hiring somebody, but it was a place to start. Like that. Do we have a second? I'm guilty. Second. I'm on the personnel board, but do we discuss what the starting salary should be? I forget. Well, the the uh, treasurer Casey collector is, is in grade G. Um, yes, so we did discuss that, John. We hadn't, we didn't have a final number. I, if you recall, I told personnel I was going to talk to Brenda and Mary Accardi about it, and I did both those things. And so the placement that you see is based on the essentials of the positions. So the treasurer collector. There was, there's a heavy weight, heavily weighted responsibility for financial management. And that person does supervise regular employees. Plus with the town clerk, they supervise elections, but the statutory requirements are very structured. So the regulatory responsibility is a little bit different. So that's what refle is reflected in the grade F for town clerk and grade G for treasure collector. So the personnel board voted these salaries. You voted the job descriptions and told me to play to come up with the placement. We're going to revisit that on the 28th. Okay. I was just saying, if we did, maybe the finance committee could vote on it, but that's a moot point now. Thank you. So we took... Barbara's position, split it, split the town clerk piece off. So we have a new position that's just treasure collector at full time. Correct. And then there's another, there's a town clerk on 161, 51, 10 for 992 hours. Is that um, less than half time? Yeah, I think we, um, let's see. Yeah, we figured 19 hours a week. Um, so Barb was a superwoman. Yep, she was. 
No doubt. No doubt. Um, whether this position requires 18, 19 hours a week or whether it requires 25 hours a week or 15 hours a week, I don't know that anybody has the answer to that. Uh, right now, the assistant does quite a bit um, of, of the work that the town clerk would do, but she's furry. Um, and, and the town clerk would also, I'm sure this is what, yeah. Um, um, the town clerk would also take on the duties of public record, records requests, uh, which is what the town clerk oftentimes does in, in towns. But in this town, it was kind of split because Barb was so busy and Casey was so busy. And so both of them kind of handled it, but really the town clerk needs to do it. So um, threw something in there to have it in there. By the time that the legislature actually approves this, I'm sure we'll be a couple months down the road. So if the town decides they wanna hire the person at more than 20 hours a week, we have room in the budget for that. Um, there's something to put in. At what point do you get benefits? What's that? At what point do you get benefits? 20. 20 hours? Mm -hmm. So this is as written, not benefited, but that could change. Right. So this is our best guess right now, Julie, about how we would frame the position. It could change. Um, it really depends on the activity and moving forward, what, what we see in the position, it being split. So we did a thoughtful suggestion around this and we talked with the auditor and we talked with staff and we looked at the job descriptions and this is our best guess right now. It could change next year. Um, so the only one we're actually have on the floor right now is the treasurer collector salaries. Does anybody have questions, further discussion? Oh, I've got a question and trying to identify what our costs have been. The account number for that 141? 145 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, salaries and we had people in the position so we pretty much spent what we budgeted right pretty close to it yeah in the last 2022 we won't spend what we budgeted because Barb left us right so. sorry i don't seem to have that someplace we can stick it in there right So last year, we had three people in there. Right. And those three people combined a salary of $190,000 plus, right? Mm -hmm. So this year, we've got 191,000 and we have Another position for 45, that was, what's the number? 34. 30, okay, 35,000. Uh, and when I look at, you can check in the back, and I look at the cost of general government, the 100 series, expenses in 19 in 2021 2022 2023 and then so we're looking at a hundred little, little less than a hundred and ten 
ten thousand or one million one hundred thousand dollars, one million two hundred thousand, one million three hundred thousand. It's still not enough. This isn't. You know, so there's, why don't we there's, shut there's, the rest of the town down and just hire people in here? And you need people in here. The problem is this town is very difficult to run on a skeleton crew. And constantly, constantly, these this staff in this building are breaking their backs because they're doing multiple jobs, trying to get the work done. And it and it mounds and mounds and mounds on. And, they, and we, we try to shake up the... The people doing them, people leave, we bring in new people. It's a constant revolving door of trying to get pay enough to keep staff here. I mean, we should be adding to Brenda's. I mean, all my, of my, that, all, let me finish. Saying. All that combined is still not enough to run our town. I mean, our town has evolved so far in just the five years that I've been here in the amount of work we do. I mean, we could decide as a town to just say, you know what, we're not going to do anything, but that's what we've done for 20 years. And we're in the position we are because of the expenses keep climbing, the requirements keep piling on and the, and the buildings keep, you know, crumbling into the ground. We need to invest and it takes people to invest. And it just, uh, yes, it's costing more money. We're also throwing a lot of stuff into these, you know, with the last two years, with COVID, like that 100 series has been a catch-all for all kinds of stuff. And the, the budgets with COVID have fluctuated and reduced, and we brought this in and contracted services over here. It's really hard to get a steady read on really what we need to do. And all I'm saying is that our staff are breaking their backs and they're pulling their hair out, and we need to, we need to fund them and make sure that we have enough support for them, regardless of what it grows each year for the foreseeable next couple of years until we can get under our feet and make sure we run this town correctly. I think eventually it will level out and maybe we need to cut other things, but this core group of people that run our town need to be supported, need to be paid well, and need to have the staff to do what they need to do. And, and we also have a, a working, we also have a working select board I, I have to say, all of us put in hours and hours every day um, and, and to, to support our staff. And our staff is just, I mean, they're going to be stolen from us all constantly because we're not keeping up. How do we differ from all the other towns that surround us? We're active. We're way active, more than any other town. We just are. There's that much going on here. For our we size. We can decide not to do that, but I think residents are asking for things. We put off things for a long time. I don't want to take over the conversation, so well, I'll, I'll leave it well, there. The, the entire board of selectmen and, and the people, uh, Casey, you're certainly aware of what goes on. Uh, you're aware of what went on in Ashfield. What, you know, I realize it's a smaller town, but what happened up there compared to what's down here? And I'm, that's a hypothetical type question. I don't, are we doing are, much more active it board? That, that all these other towns. I think a much more active to board. And we can. Well, I, I don't think they're surviving. There's no town that's surviving right now on like extra flow of income, unless you're Irving and you've got a giant you know, I, mountain full of water that just kind of produces money. Um, you know, no town is surviving right now. It's very difficult. I mean, you look at Sunderland, Waitley, they're all, you know, everybody's struggling and, with budgets. In the final analysis, uh, we're in some cases in a little better shape than some of the other towns in that our water department, our fire department, are not part of the town and therefore they're not in the town's tax base. Mm -hmm. If they were, it, it just jacks the tax base up even more. Yep. And we're sitting at, you know, uh, at least 1.5% add, add a little bit more. Uh, excuse me, our tax rate is up to $15 a thousand. Yep. And that's an increase from in the neighborhood of 10 or $11 a thousand, we managed to build two schools and the tax rate 
but no, we stay under. But nothing else. Really, I mean, what have we invested in in 20 years? The two schools? You know, we haven't really kept up with what we need to. And now we're kind of saddled with all this work that needs to happen. And so we should have been spending more all that time that, in debt doing and capital. Something different from what other towns are doing. I don't hear other towns. I mean, I, I look at I look at uh, Greenfield. Their track tax rate is sitting at uh, you know, twenty three dollars a thousand. I don't. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're bumping that twenty five dollar limit. Uh, and uh, completely different town, though. Completely different. Uh, it's a struggle. I, Allie, I can't hear you. No. Sorry. We need another microphone. Um, I think Skip's posing an interesting question. Can you hear me, Carolyn? Yeah, thank you. Uh, about what is the value of of these, you know, services? What is the value of funding the town in this manner? And um, and I think it's a really interesting question. Um, and I think a, another way to ask it would be to to talk about what you know. What do we have? That that makes Deerfield work well. That makes people want to live here, and that that the people who live here want to keep, you know. And do we have anything that's extraneous? I think that's sort of a is that am I off base, Skip? Is that sort of the question you're getting at? Like like what are we paying for that we don't want, or what are we getting no, for just, what we're paying? I'm just I'm looking at the the growth in the tax rate over the last 10, 20 years. Well, and, and then I'm looking at the benefits that out there. And I don't see a dramatic change in the benefits that people are receiving. I do see a fairly substantial increase in taxes. Uh, and what are, what is the, what are the, as town residents, what are we getting for that increase? Skip, we're getting the we're getting um, we're, what we're getting is this educational system. Seventy percent of our budget is school related, and we have been operating on level funding for the municipal part of the budget. Oh come you, on, Carol! When you got a ten percent raise last year, a ten percent raise this year in the hundred numbered accounts, so that's twenty percent. And go back. Yeah, this, we this, did. We added help in that office. That job, the town administrator job, it takes three people to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, it's just overwhelming. I, I don't not, know that we're alone in, in the rising yeah. cost to provide services. I mean, I know it's across multiple in industries, and I think there's different ways to approach it. One is you level fund, right, which actually leads to a decrease in service, and the other is you level service, which is going to lead to an increase in cost. And I think what we're seeing is that I, and there's certainly going to be changes in the town that I'm, you know, I don't remember because I wasn't here 20 years ago. Um, but I, you know, we're the town evolves and then the cost to provide services increases and we're at a point now where there's this major workforce pressure pushing on salaries, mm -hmm. which is the number one expense mm -hmm. in any budget. Um, but if you don't pay it, you're going to be cutting services mm -hmm. rather than le level service. So it, it is, it's uncomfortable. I don't think we're alone there. It, there's but no we're also, we're not just adding. So I, I totally agree that there's huge pressure on the salaries and we're going to see the salaries go up. Um, but we're adding people too, mm -hmm. and there's more stuff that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how much, maybe Casey has an opinion on this. How much is, um, is there like radically increased administrative burden and reporting and stuff that goes back to the state and to the federal government? Um, and is there a huge administrative load from COVID grants and any other grants that are coming? There are a lot of administrative things that are happening now that weren't required 10 years ago. And, you know, back, I think even when Jack was on the board, we actually had a floater at that time that traveled between the different offices to try to take up the slack. Basically what we're doing right now is looking at adding that person back in that was cut a few years ago. 
And what happened is that person was cut, services were increasing, and we are putting more and more stress on our personnel here. Uh, we're losing, you know, how many town administrators have we gone through in the last five, six years? Uh, it's not healthy for a town to be going through that much. So, you know, we're looking at that balancing and making that workflow so it functions well. And we are be also at the same time retaining the very capable personnel that we have here, which we haven't been able to. Indeed. So, you know, it's yeah. so we may have cut that floater, but we added we added an administrative part time administrative assistant in the highway department. We added yep. something in the some help here here, and yep. then we increased we, uh, we, Jen's Jen, position to correct. a um, more responsible position. Yep. So we have. And I feel we, like that's probably a wash. And like we losing have, the floater and adding all that stuff. And we have added, I think, to the. Um, to, you know, some hours to each position here and there, like that Board of Health we're looking at, you know, we, a lot of times, you know, Carolyn did a lot of the work and, and, and still does a lot of work and doesn't get paid, but we're kind of transitioning that to other people. But you're right, there are, we did, we have added in the select board office here and there. I'm not sure what it looked like 10 years ago, but but there is an immense amount of, I'll let Casey speak because I know you asked her the question, I should stop. <laughs> so, uh, but it, there is a lot more administrative stuff, but please Casey. So to your question, Julie, administrative reporting to the state and complexity of how we're communicating has increased dramatically in the last 10 years. It isn't just the last two years, but the amount of grants takes time. There's grant administration that is actually not recognized as billable time. In a lot of places you would see it as billable time. That time isn't recognized as, as a set aside. It really hasn't been until now. Um, so there's support work that the select board office does for not just the select board, but for other committees and that you have a very active planning board. You have a very active um, senior housing projects. You have the CCI that creates support needs. You have regular HR that I think in some ways wasn't getting as done as effectively as it could have been. Um, we have special projects. And some of them are seasonal. Some of them are related to certain activities like climate resiliency. That becomes a task that is added to staff to assist a certain group, the MVP core group, to continue those climate resiliency projects. And that is an added duty. It's an example of one. Um, we have general responsibilities that have increased because of the complexity of those things and the communication because you're talking to various officials. Um, the special projects could also be, you mentioned it before, the COVID reporting and the COVID um, administration. That was a huge project. We actually hired people to deal with it because it was so complex, especially the FEMA piece, um, and used our CARES Act money to do that. But they don't actually want to pay us. They want us to pay them back. They don't want to pay us for that because they don't see the need, but they aren't doing it boots on the ground. So you have unforeseen projects that come up, like, for instance, dealing with the backstop, um, the July storm flooding expenses and management, contract management, they came up with that. So there's a lot that goes on that people don't see. And with an active planning board, that's why you're seeing changes in contracted services. With active grant activities, you're seeing changes in contracted services because that's the busyness of the town. I don't think we are suffering from the, I, I don't think, I don't think we're different from any town that's suffering when it comes to recruit, recruitment and retention and for employees. That's a huge problem. If you looked at my H, MMHR website, on a daily basis, you would see it. Um, but that's not something you guys see on a regular basis. So you have a busy town, you have economic development projects, that's a, a whole different level of busy. And so the town has some things they wanna get done that creates work and that creates the need for staff. Because like David and Trevor said, we reduce staff in a reorganization and it finally came to a head several years ago where there just wasn't the capacity to do things. And we're still having trouble with capacity. 
the meet the meetings are a major you know this hybrid it is burning our staff out immensely i mean i think thursday there might be six meetings to, to six. facilitate and um it, you know talking to jen today i can just see it in her eyes she is melting and like ready to walk out the door she is sick and tired of hybrid and all of that because it just it, it's not even just what alex is doing and managing and making sure we're not getting bombed and all that it's um it's it's setting up that meeting and making sure it's on the right scheduling <clears throat> uploading them to youtube all that work all those hours and hours of work were never done before even three years ago so it's just that's really killing us right now and maybe we decide that it's no longer tenable to do um hybrid meetings however they're very convenient you know carolyn can be at home and we have people that can join in and so it is great to get people's participation but we all have to recognize there's a huge cost to that in burnout of staff and just the manage the we're meeting. getting burned out yeah we are getting burned out too because i've had three back to back right? like, oh, three God. we had a three i had a three o'clock a four o'clock and a five o'clock and that doesn't even count the morning i mean that's what people don't understand the zoo, your expectations now are that we are available all the time and it's in craziness. We, we all understand. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Brenda, go ahead. I, I think the other thing that I've noticed is um, grants. We used to get grants and they would pay 100%. And now we're getting grants where you have to have a 25% match or you have to have a 50% match. And it requires some pretty complex calculations of what uh, time is involved by our staff to support that project and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing is um, ARPA and the infrastructure package have, have opened up um, a multitude of grant possibilities, but if we don't pursue them, we're not gonna get them. Yeah. So therefore the grant uh, consultant or grant writer, MVP consultant, whatever you wanna call them in the contracted services budget is important because if we want to take advantage of what's being offered to us right now or what we can what we can get with the town's needs um Final. we need to pursue that so th so those were the other things that i noted that um casey didn't touch upon go alex i just want to loop it back around to, to what i interpreted as skip's original point which is that it sounds to me this is actually for me been very interesting conversation to like give mm -hmm. a perspective and a kind of a bird's eye view of what's happening in town and what the growth and the evolution is. But um, it sounds like projects are more complicated than they used to be in some ways. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure I mean, that's how it is in my you know, healthcare industry. Um, and at a certain point we could say, like this is, this is too much, the cost is not worth the benefit. I personally, I'm not there. Um, I, you know, I feel like, we're doing important things that the majority of people in town want and benefit from. Um, and I want to take advantage of the grant opportunities that enable growth and hopefully would lead us to a place where then, you know, you, once you grow, you can plateau out again if you want to. Um, but there is an option and I think it's appropriate for the finance committee to discuss it of whether, you know, at what point do we want to say uncle on growth mm -hmm. because it just, it costs too much. So. Yep. Can I can I just add that climate change has not been budgeted at all. We have every storm, like the July storms, we have multi-million dollar losses. And without going after grants, whether it's emergency watershed protection money, whether it's hazardous mitigation money, whether it's FEMA money, whatever, there's a tremendous, a tremendous amount of work that goes in to making sure that we can cover and repair these damages. Um, I can tell you that I have probably 200 hours into trying to hustle money for River Road. And that is probably an underestimate. But we're, you know, what's the best deal? Is it the 60% match from EWP? Is it the 75% match of the FEMA? Is it 75% match of, um, you know, uh, the hazardous mitigation, or do we wait until the next event and then declare emergency and, and do fix it for 125,000? 
what, what's the best deal for the town? Is it a temporary fix or is it gonna be a multi-million dollar fix that will last for the next 30 years? That's the kind of stuff that we are dealing with every few months. And we still haven't sorted out all the July damage and we're, we'll hopefully get, you know, at least 70 or $80,000 from the 7.5 million that uh, bill that Joe and Natalie put forward but we never got we never got the million dollars, few million dollars of damages that were that we put in for under FEMA because once you did the state population and rolled in all the state population, our damages out here weren't enough. And it, and that's the kind of stuff that we are dealing with two, three, four times a year. And and our office is dealing with it because yes. I'm out hustling all that kind of stuff, but Casey has to back me up on this. Mm -hmm. She's also doing support work with this. I'm talking to Trevor and Dave about it. I mean, this ties us up in incredible amount. And, you know, I mean, there's just no, no, nothing is being done about that. I'm, I'm, we need to figure that out. And That's so keep in mind, we also have to do the background work, like, like Carolyn said, but there's a cost to actually getting a project shovel ready for any kind of grant. And there's a search for grant writers. It takes up time, which means it interrupts you from doing other things. Well, I think I might have a grant writer for us, Carolyn. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, we got meetings next week. Hopefully if Trevor and Dave are okay with the River Road thing, we're gonna go forward with this and we'll, and we'll get some, you know, more guidance and hopefully we'll go for some kind of fix for River Road that will happen in the next few months. But I mean, this is, we've been working on this. I don't know how many times John Bachorek, our chief has gone out with me to, you know, do the site visits. I mean, it's just a huge amount of effort and, it, and it's staff time involved. And, you know, cause Kevin's not been around. So it's even more so, but I, I, I'm just saying that nobody's estimating the cost of climate change. And that's huge. It really is. Just, just my, my point is that if I look back and then try to pro project forward, if I go back 10, 20 years and I look at the tax rate, and the tax rate is nice to use because it, it really, you know, it's Compasses. dollars. Yeah. Um, and if we had a tax rate, it was it was exceeded 10, but not by much. And it got to a couple of years ago, almost 16. It's a 60% increase. If we went from that 16 and we got another 60% increase over 10 or 15 years. We couldn't, right? We'd hit the cap. We we hit that ceiling. 2.5 that $25 yep. uh, tax rate that we can't exceed. And we got fire departments and water departments that aren't included there. And it's like, yeah. uh, we need to look someplace along the way. And I find it difficult to believe that we're the only ones that one are addressing the issue or that have the issue. I, so, I mean, I'm not gonna be around here a whole lot longer to bitch and complain. So, but you Somebody can, will you take can, up you the, can ignore yeah. it. No, but we're not you, ignoring you, it. you ignore it at your own peril. Yeah, um, there's a lot of lot of expense coming. So, the uh, tax rates are a consideration that people have in where to locate. Oh, sure. Yep. Oh, yep. sure. The way I kind of look at it is 10 years ago, I, I consider I call grants free money. <laughs> and it was free money back then. The free money now is not free. No, that's exactly right. It's, that's one of the, the bigger problems that we're encountering. You know, the state says they have this billions of dollars and, you know, recovery funds that show me the money. Whether it's going to hit Western Mass is very slim to none. <laughs> and then we have to work to, to get it. And, yeah. and then we have to report on it. It's, it's, it's just incredible. Yeah. And I don't know. But you can't run the town without the grants, unfortunately, too. I mean, you just can't afford, you can't put all the expenses on the taxpayers either.
services have gone up, right? You were saying 10, 20 years ago that there were like two police officers or something and there was nobody on at night and that I'm there was- I'm not sure exactly what the schedule, but, but when I moved to town- 30 or 40 years ago. Okay. <laughs> when I moved to town, there were two full-time police officers. One who couldn't carry a gun. Well, he couldn't shoot a gun. <laughs> he could oh. carry one. No, he couldn't. Well, he, he put a hole in the ceiling at the station. Yeah, we, they took they took the car, <laughs> took the bullets away from. Us. But you know, was I was a part time <laughs> officer in Deerfield in the early seventies, <laughs> and we had one guy on at a time. Yeah. Uh, in the early eighties, we went to two people on a swing shift at night. No. Uh, well, we're so servicing the town. have gone up as far as what services. I wouldn't be a cop police today for nobody's money and compared and to what, fire. you know. Back then when I was a cop, it was a community service. It's not, it's a lot different now. So. No, it, it is. It's just, you know, we, we're going to have to start picking and choosing. Mm -hmm. uh, that we, haven't, we haven't been doing, maybe we should have been doing, but we haven't been doing. And I know it's 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 nice to sort of point fingers at the schools, but I look at the school budget. It's going up two and a half, but generally speaking, two and a half, three percent a year. So you went through the budget and what did it look like? By department. Uh, schools weren't yeah. weren't going up. Radically compared to where we go. Yeah, but also with the schools. You know, 10 years ago, you had a population of 700 and they're from the four towns. Now you have a population of 600 and a third of them are from outside of our district. And I agree. That's a that, big difference. That is a problem. And that, that's a big problem. It is. I think. But that's there's, just, no, there's no way for $5,000 you can educate a student for a child. 17. Yeah. But we only get 5,000 mm -hmm. for those school children. Yep. This is, well, we beat that one pretty good, right? <laughs> so after good conversation. Us all, Very good conversation. Uh, so yeah. this budget adds, it adds a town clerk, it adds the planner and the grant writer services, it adds the board of health um, person. Are there any other pers like increase in personnel? We have There's, the EMS well, extra uh, people. We have mm -hmm. added to the wastewater yeah. treatment plant a uh, an operator because we really are down. I mean, we have one operator running two plants right now, but we do we do need to hire a chief operator, and we really need three but operators. We had three but, just because the position is vacant. It's but not I, a new position. But I think we there is no. We actually uh, added one we, person. We added, I remember? Yeah, yeah, we, we have added. the three to four. Yes. Yes. we need yeah, four operators. To like. to yeah, yeah, but that's covered by by sewer. Yeah, the sewer the, the, fees. Yeah. Yes, right. yes right. exactly. So that's not. Yeah. Right. It's not a right. It's not a general budget item. And this is a conversation that I've had with for the last kind of part of ten years with a selectman and with town administrators. That the one position that I think we need most that would be most beneficial is someone in here doing economic development, yeah, full time, I not agree someone that. who does it yeah. as sort of an add-on to their other position. We need to bring that. Win. Yeah. And that would be the planner, right? No. That's... Well, could be a mixture of the well, two. It could be a mixture. Never, never will have enough time to do economic development. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. The planner? We don't have one now. What would, what would but, they yeah, do? I, mean, I, I think yeah. she has a point. If they're not doing economic development, what if? Why? Why do we want one? Why we want no, I think I, I kind of view them as the same person. We'll see. That's where we can ask the planning board. Yeah, well, you know, we all know that the essential to keep a town running is you've got to have that balance between commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the planner is somebody that would look at that commercial side of things a little bit stronger than we have in the past. Because you know the commercial doesn't put the tax the burden on the town as much as the residential does. Mm -hmm. But that's that then rolls over into economic development, right? Correct. Yes. I agree. Yes. Yep. For sure. All right. 
So we actually have a motion on the table for the treasurer collector salaries. So I closed my book. It's 145, 51, 10. 54, 10. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's expense. Sorry, my bad. Move the previous question. <laughs> I got to find my page to start. 145, 51, 10. Um, so recognizing that there's another line item for the town clerk that's separate from this, we have a moved and seconded for 145, 51, 10 at 191,507, which is essentially what we had last year, $990 increase. No, it's a $45,000. It's a $35,000 $35, increase. It's just on a different page. Yeah. So is there any further discussion here? Well, if we're voting for the 190,000, we're presumably voting for the other 35,000. We're going to put the two of them together so that we can vote. Yeah, we need to do it together. So we, why don't you amend the um, vote? I'll amend the motion to uh, vote treasurer collector salaries and town clerk salaries account 145 5110 and 161.5110 as one item. And so not, not that they are one item, but the total dollars. Okay, do we have a second on that motion? Second, that's yes. Good, Good. Um, so now we are voting just on the motion to vote both of these at once. Is there any discussion of that? Seems arbitrary to me, so I have no opinion on it. We vote them together or separate. We vote no okay. one or the other. All right. All those in favor of voting both of these as one, four, all the five, all those opposed, all the abstaining, abstaining. two. So that's five zero two. I don't have a place to write this. Five zero. I have my method. That's it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are now discussing an amended vote. Mm -hmm. um, for both treasurer collector salaries and town clerk Good. salaries at 191,507 and 34,760. So that's total, essentially uh, a 35 something. It's a total of 226,267. Compared to 190,517 a year ago. Okay. Any discussion of that? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, maybe. Brenda? Yes. Um, the hours you have um, in the treasure collector salaries, you have them working 40 hour a week. Correct. But you don't really know that that's going to happen, do you? I can assume they will. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Kind of hard to hire a treasurer collector part time if your assistants are working full time. Um, and the whole reason I didn't budget for anything less for this year is because right now I'm getting extra and Sarah and Jen are both getting extra to take up the slack. So I didn't see any reason to budget, considering that that person might not be hired for a cup for a couple of months into the new year. If no, no, that's sense. not what I'm saying. Yeah. I thought because the positions are being split. I mean, Barbara was working 40 hours a week, I assume. Maybe a little bit more, but. Maybe a little bit more, I think. But now you've got two people. Right, but as, I, as I said earlier, well, number one, our public records requests are, are going through the roof. Mm -hmm. And it used to be that Barbara would take care of some of those and Casey would take care of some of them. But quite frankly, she doesn't have time and the, the treasurer collector wouldn't be doing that, but the town clerk would be doing that, which is part of the reason for the, for the additional hours for the town clerk. Okay, so you don't think the hours are gonna go down? That's I don't the, think so, okay. no. You won't be able to hire anybody part time. Right. That's true too. Any further discussion about these two positions? 
two line items, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All those in favor of both of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? I think we need to find another way somehow. You want to volunteer and come to work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You got plenty of time now. John, come on over. We used to do it. <laughs> okay, so both of those pass six one zero. Do you want to talk debt? We could we could talk debt if you want. Um, or wastewater treatment plan. What's that? Yeah. Wastewater treatment plan or debt? Uh, let's do debt first. Debt first. Um, we did just get bids back today for our school roof loan and for the um, Oxford property loan. Oh, one point oh five percent. Oh, very. I nice. think that'll be presented to you tomorrow night. That's great. Um, That's great. So, um, on the maturing debt, uh, the garage. This is a, the standard two hundred forty five thousand uh, that's due each year. Uh, the school roof, we've always paid 100000 down on the school roof. Uh, right now, the balance of that is 165986 So quite reasonably, within the next two years, we'll have, we'll have that one completely paid off. So that one sixty five is this 100000 that we're voting for 2023 goes towards that? Uh, that's correct. Okay, got it. Yep. So did you say that again? So right now the balance of that loan is 165,986. And we'll pay a hundred thousand down, plus we'll get some pledges. Um yep. so hopefully that'll close. go down. I I'm uh hopeful that that'll be you know fifty thousand dollars next year. So um then for the Oxford property, we are now in our third year, start of our third year, so we are required this year. Oh, and I need to, I need to, at the next meeting, let's, let's get that on the agenda. I need to present a reserve fund transfer request for the uh, pay down that we had to do on the Oxford property. So every year we have to pay down 12,815 if we don't pay it all off. Um, we did renew that loan for just six months. We're very close. I because we're that. close on that purchase and sale agreement. And at that point in time, then we can vote to, um, to maybe at the fall town meeting. They actually yeah. signed the purchase and sale agreement. Right. Um, It'll be pretty close. But there could be snags. Right. So we just kind of wait until the six end. Months just in case. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's September, right? Or yeah. fall meeting or something, we can pay it off. Right. Um, then when it, when it comes to the phase one, we're required to pay, uh, I think Barbara said a minimum of 35,000. I haven't been able to confirm that yet with our financial advisor, but I got to thinking about this today and um, Julie and I were going back and forth and Trevor and Casey and I were talking. Um, it makes sense. We're not required to pay a lot down, but pretty soon we're gonna be paying a USDA loan on this. Mm -hmm. Plus we're gonna have our own obligation for um, Two million. I think it's around two million. So it made sense to budget, and this could be changed at any point in time. I just threw something in. I threw in a four hundred thousand dollar pay down of that loan. So a hundred thousand would go into this budget. Three hundred thousand goes into the wastewater treatment plant budget. Um, just a just putting something out there so that we can have a discussion on what you really want to do, but it made sense to pay something down because pretty soon we're going to have to pay things down and then to be paying USDA and paying our loan. Um, it's going to be a little more difficult. So I know this is debt excluded, so it adds to your tax levy. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, well, it's, it's not, it's not anything more than what we had last year in regards to, oh yeah, it is because the clarifier was not debt excluded. Right. Um, so it does add a little more to the tax levy, but that's it in a nutshell. So the, the 400,000 that you put down to pay off, that's towards the 2 million? Correct. Okay. 
what, do, what do we have for uh, in, I, well we voted for at the last couple of town meetings two or three whatever it was yeah I only remember two votes were there more than two votes that for monetary votes we took one for the clarifier the original clarifier right and that was a million dollars right? that was a million dollars yep and then the other one was, was the ni 19 million is that the one you're talking million yeah and that was the only i think those are the only votes we've taken for so. yeah right and the 19 million was debt excluded yep and for some reason the one million was not right right it was more of an emergency repair but yeah so and we haven't paid any of, of those the clarifiers, the, the clarifiers completely off. gone we paid we paid, paid that, that off last year yeah or this year we paid Did it we off pay in it july off we rolled that into the other no, no we paid, paid it, it off. off so the clarifier is paid yeah. um we paid down two hundred and fifty thousand on the phase one project which was the first two hundred and fifty thousand required by usda yeah so now i'm suggesting we pay another four hundred thousand down and where's that coming from uh, taxes, some of it, and the rest of it's coming from the wastewater treatment plant, just like a yeah, the you know, 75 25%, 25 split. Yeah, that actually is showing a hundred thousand that the town has to pay, and the other 300,000 coming out of retained earnings. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I actually um, am budgeting in the wastewater treatment plant to use 300,000 out of the retained earnings. On a motion, yes, please. I'll move. Second. Any further discussion? I, without have, without being able to see the big picture, I'm not prepared to vote to spend to, to actually make any payments. And by the big picture, I mean the whole plant. What that what that spending is going to look like, and. and Throw in the old Deerfield operation. Uh, you have the debt. We're obligated. We signed the no, promise to. We signed the promise to pay. That's. We haven't. We haven't signed a loan yet. What's that? The yep. the loan with USDA will happen. The bond will happen when we're done with the project. Right. Correct. Then hopefully we spend all the grant money. Right. Yeah, and, and but the typical way of doing it is is you know not to, it may be to pay interest, but even some of that can get rolled into the. How much you is still you still have a minimum requirement to pay pay down. Um, on, on this, from what I understand. Well, like I said, I haven't confirmed that. Because I think there was an additional, I could look at that list from USDA again. The initial was 250 that was required, but I, I right. think they increased that some because of the new, the addition that we added to the project. Correct. Um, so there's an additional, I think it's 100 and something maybe. Uh, it maybe was, it was an additional Do you remember? 1 million something. Uh, I don't have that figure. In front no, but I mean the amount they were going to require us to yes. put in. Oh, I. Yeah, I thought it was a million nine eighty seven, but yeah, I, you're right I, about I, I that. could be wrong. You're right about that. What's the interest rate? On which? The nineteen million. I won't ever well, the, well, we won't know that until know June. Yeah, okay. But I mean, I'm anticipating was, two and a half to three percent. We had two and a half last year. Okay, was, thank you. It was one some uh yeah, the additional stuff was gonna be a one point. 375 with you're usda talking, correct you're i'm talking, talking about, about the, the ban one. Got yep it. they yep. committed because interest rates are going up correct are we, yes uh, well we're are we are we we're not so, our short-term borrowing is not committed it no, is for but, some of it but not the full amount right and, but our usda long-term 40-year note is committed good all right right so if we pay down four hundred thousand now is that lower our borrowing yes you mean the ceiling oh we've got a 
We've paid the million, so actually we have authorization to borrow 19 million at this point in time. That's it. No more. That was all, yeah, that was all we've asked for. Uh, and I assume we're asking for, we'll be asking for more at town meeting. Um, I don't know if it's gonna just be this the additional town meeting. Three million? Okay. That's a discussion we should all have. <laughs> if, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna spend it. I know. You gotta keep, you gotta I gotta ask for it somewhere, right? It. I know. It. Well, we're in the middle of trying to figure out, do we, do we ask for that 3 million in one shot or do we ask for the 22 to do both plants, you know, kind of thing or whatever else we could get for help from nonprofits, you know, less that amount. It's, it's kind of a moving target really, but I agree that we need to get moving on figuring out and finishing that plant, which is gonna be 22 million total, which is another three, I believe. Do the math right. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> it's probably true. Do we want um, You brought it up. So <laughs> <laughs> what what the minimum that we're required to pay on this um, mm. wastewater treatment plant loan? Yeah, Do you want confirmation 30. of that before we vote this item? Because we're thinking it's 35. So we should pay something down on it. I don't see anything wrong with that. Try to be proactive and reactive later on, especially when we know our budget's way over the line. Doesn't affect our budget. Any other? Yeah, this is this is debt excluded, so it doesn't help our budget any. But well, but it will still affect the tax. It rates. affects the tax. It still rates. goes in the yes, tax rate, exactly. though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I would be perfectly honest and say that my comprehension of this discussion we've been having for the last ten minutes is that like a sixty-two and a half percent. So I'll just say it. I'll own it. I think that's pretty good. Four years on finance committee, and I'm like. A, yeah. OD um, <laughs> for this wastewater treatment plant borrowing conversation. Yeah. Um, I would say that, you know, philosophically speaking, it makes sense to me to put some money ahead. I trust Brenda's gut guess. I don't think she's been, she's led us astray. Yes. <laughs> so, yep. you know, I, and I, I'm sure I've. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, we, better, we better be careful with that. I, I do think, I mean, I am confident I'm not the only person who's not at an A plus level on this particular issue, and it might be nice at some point. No, I'm not implicating anybody. I just know when I feel that dumb, I'm not the only one most of the time. Occasionally, I am. Um, but so maybe at some point it would be nice, maybe after even yeah. this budget process, maybe we do a nice overview learning tutorial session sure. at like a, you know, eighth grade reading level for those of us who need a little support. So Skip has I'll been be trying front, to put that together seat. for a while. Yeah. So it, let me just go back for a minute here. Uh, what do we borrow? What's the rate that the $19 million that we get out there that we're spending? As we're well, getting a bill in every so periodically. For, so last year we took out a loan for nine million three fifty for the amount that we expected to spend by the early part of June, and that was given to us at a rate at two and a half percent. But we got a premium to bring that down. Right. Um, this year we should take out nineteen million. Minus the two hundred and fifty thousand that we already paid down. I had written that wrong. It's it's eighteen million seven fifty that we should be taking out. At least that's my perception or my anticipation. I am waiting for an updated cash flow from uh, DPC. They've um, uh, promised to get that to me by Friday, so that I have a better idea what we really need to be borrowing. Because I'm not exactly sure what the timeline is anymore. Originally, it was going to be done in March, and I don't know that that's going to happen anymore. Is it? No, I think. So. Well, the, is it still planned? At least for the first phase, and then if we can get okay. phase two going, that'd be great. So um, we might be borrowing less than what I've what I've anticipated here, but. But the f interest rate is still fixed when you go to borrow. No, it. not with this. No, not with the bands. No. Okay. With the bands, they they bid on that. Yeah. 
but uh, once we're done and we get the loan from USDA that covers it. Yes, that that's that's fixed. interest rate is set and it's yes. two interest rates for two different parts. One that's of the correct. interest date is one point something. It's this fantastic rate. Yes. And the other is two point something, which is still going to look pretty good. Yeah, yep. the two point something is on the 8,569,000 or whatever it is. Yep. And, the, and the lower rate is on the additional uh, one something. So my concern here is that we're talking about using whatever the $400,000 and whether it's 100 for the town and 300 for the, the district, it's 400,000 bucks that we will not have to make payments in the future. Right, right, because right now our obligation um, I wish I knew the exact amount of our obligation. Uh, I just don't have I that paperwork in front of me. What do you need for the? It was uh, we we were originally required to pay two hundred and fifty thousand down, <coughs> and then when they gave us the additional loan, they split that and required us. I thought it was another million nine eighty seven. So so I'm just saying let's pay down four hundred thousand out of that amount that the town is going to be re required to pay. Not not what what USDA is giving us a loan for, but the other loan that we're going to have to take out. Uh, you lost me. So USD, USDA is giving us two loans. Yep. Uh, for a so they have a, they have a first loan is 8,569,000. The uh, 569,000. The grant is 2,604,501. The cost overrun loan is two million nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand. The cost overrun applicant. So what we're putting in is one point six million, and then the applicant contribution, which we paid already, which is two uh, two hundred fifty thousand six hundred four dollars. So that brings the total for phase one at sixteen million. Eleven thousand one hundred and five dollars. So we're still on the hook for for taking out a loan for a one point six million, in addition to what USDA is loaning us and the grant that they're giving us. Yep. I thought we had almost three million not not still remaining of the nineteen. We still have three we, million that we can spend. Yep. Correct. Right. Out of the nineteen million, which right. I believe you were going to pursue. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Then, so further breaking down the project cost uses so legal fees is fifty thousand. The interim uh, interest is two hundred and fifty thousand. The engineering fees is one just under one point seven. Project contingency, which is eleven percent, is nine hundred thousand. Um, development is the eight million four hundred and ninety eight one fifty nine. There's bond council of fifty thousand. The overrun development, which is four million one one hundred and twenty seven. And then overrun contingency, we have another contingency of 437,000. I can provide that if anybody needs all can this stuff. Can you provide that for us for next week? Of course. Yep. Or send it to us earlier. Yep. I'll yeah. print it right now for you. And so, do, do you understand my concern that, that you know, we're, take, we're making payments that we're going to have to pay anyways? someplace along the way. I just don't know where those payments would be. In the... I, I guess I just thought it made sense to make some payments now in a year when we weren't going to be required to pay USDA on top of it. So as to lower the amount of our obligation to pay outside of USDA. I do too. I'm not sure what it means though. That's the point. You know. So we're going to have to take a loan out for essentially two million dollars, well, plus the three million if we if we bring this up to the nineteen right. million dollar cost. So that USDA is not. We're going to have to take a loan out for twenty two million. Mm, not not at this point. Okay. We're obligated. We're obligated. The town has agreed to an appropriation of nineteen million. We don't finish the plant without that other three million. It's my understanding. Well, that has to be voted, yeah. So right now, that's not even part of the picture. Well, we need, so, it is part of the picture. But not for purposes of our fiscal 23 budget. It, no, it needs to be in the fiscal 23 budget. We need, that thing needs to go on town meeting 
that plant's going to, I assume that plant's going to be finished before the end of FY23. Is that correct? March of 2023 for the for the first phase, but then then we would need to go into phase two, which would be 2024, 2025. For, for the so for the, the balance of the yeah. phase two, which would be the the um, aeration tanks, the chlorine stuff. Okay. And the, but we will we will be finished with that the $19 million piece and in in 2025, probably. The, the 16 million will be done in 2023, March of 2023. Provide, and that seems to be good. I hope there's nobody listening to this trying to figure out what the hell this plan is. It changes constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and we also have some resiliency opportunities that we are pursuing. So that would lower, you know, the cost if we have some grant additional grant money. All right, hang on a second, Carolyn. Um, Beth had a question. Go so ahead, to please. Finish phase one. Yep. Closer to the you need to have sixteen million dollars, which we have. Yes, which we have. which is part of the nineteen. Oh, right. Yep, I understand yep. that. Yeah, and that's going to be done. So that's in the twenty twenty three. Yes. 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 So what's the three million that you need? To so for? so the additional so phase two of the project, which was supposed to be all of the nineteen million, um, was was to finish out the aerations and, and everything. We pulled some of phase two into phase one. That's why it kind of grew to 16 million. But the other reason it grew to 16 million is the bids were just not anywhere near what we were expecting. So um, the current estimate right now to finish out that plant for everything we really want to do, regardless of resiliency and other stuff, it's about 22 million. So an additional three. So we have three already. Some of it will hang on to in contingency and stuff. Um, and I, I can talk about that plan of what we're gonna do with that. Um, but if we had another three, we could kind of do everything we, we really think should be done there. But that's up to the town to kind of decide, do we, do we wanna finish that work or not? So that does not include resiliency. And that would be if- And I don't think we should build resiliency. Not, at, not until- We had the town of Greenfield, they had a song a few years ago, they flooded the whole golf course and everything else. Whatever happened to that? We don't hear about any problems other than all the poor neighbors can't use the property now. That's all. But I didn't hear any big stink about just like paying millions of dollars to get fines or fees. Yeah, I don't. Else. I don't. So resiliency, I think we should take off the table and we should do that next session to add three million. The, the one thing we were looking at is if we could get the state to help pay for 50% and we kind of put it in resiliency was the effluent pipe, the pipe that leads out to the river. Um, some of it at the plant is in really good shape when it gets down to the river, not so much. So that was one thing we were looking at, but that's not anything like in our plan right at the moment. If, if money fell out of the sky and it made it worthwhile to do, I think Carolyn was thinking that would be if, if a grant provided it, we would all look at that together and say, is this worth spending the money on if we can get half of it paid for? But well, it's deteriorated, but yeah. I mean, this is a project the town has voted to undertake. The 19, so yes. Why are we even discussing whether we should pay back, pay, you know, make payments on the loan, which we have may uh, uh, taken out in order to pay for a project we have already voted to undertake? It seems like. I mean, if we don't, you know, how can we not? All right. we've so, we a a, million dollar budget so we have a motion and a second for maturing debt at 710-5900 um, for $457,815, um, which includes $100,000 towards the wastewater treatment plant which we've already, as a town, voted to pay for. Um, is there any further discussion on this line item, not the bigger picture sewer thing? Just that if this is uh, paying a little bit now, not pay it later when we will have other things to pay for. Okay. Anybody else have comments? No, other than the question doesn't, uh, doesn't make sense. All Second. Right. All those in favor? Five, six. All those opposed? One, 
What, what's that the count? Passes six one zero. Let's look at interest on maturing debt. I'm not sure we want to look at interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's we know. Let's, we, look, at let's we, look at interest on temporary loans. We most. We, no, we can Do look. You at, want to talk about it? Yeah, okay. we can talk about it if you want. It's uh, seven fifty one fifty nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to be ready to vote it tonight? I. You could. There might be some changes to it that that we can vote revote it later. Why don't you describe the problem to us? So, so there is no problem with the garage. Do you want to get a motion on the table first? I move that we uh, recommend two hundred one thousand five hundred forty five dollars towards interest on maturing debt. Okay, great. So the garage bond is set unless we refinance or re refund that and um, that is yet to be determined. Um, our bond is callable by June, but uh, based on my conversation with our financial advisor uh, this week, she's anticipating that we might not end up doing anything with that, but right now the rates are just all over the place. She said they're very volatile. Um, if they settle to a, to a lower amount, maybe we could redo that, but she's, questioning it at this point. Um, the DES roof and the, um, the Oxford uh, New England Natural Bakers repurchase of land. Those two numbers I just plugged in today because we got the bids back today for those two. So those are set. Uh, those will not change. I, I just, I'm questioning the amount that I put in for the $19 million. If we figure I don't know exactly how much we're going to be borrowing. It depends on the cash flow that I'm going to get on Friday. And I haven't had a discussion with our financial advisor because her and I were going to go back, get back together after I got the cash flow to talk about it some more. So I don't know what the interest is going to be on that. I plugged in, uh, I think close to 300,000 or 3% on a uh, $16 million loan. I don't know whether that's right or not. So that's why I was, that's the only reason I was hesitant. I need to make sure that there's enough in there to cover Thank it you. so that when we go to the tax recap, I, I can put the right amount on the tax recap because it's debt excluded. But um, that's that's the only question in my mind at this point, or really the main question. So what, what do you want to do? You want to hold off? Or I, hold? I, I think I'd rather hold off for a little bit, but at least this way you have it in your hands and you know what I'm kind of looking at at this point. So you think you'll have a better number within a couple of weeks? I, I sure hope so. I, I it, it probably will not be mm, much closer, but at least I will have had a conversation with our financial advisor and I will have a cash flow in hand. I move that we table the motion. Great, okay, okay. Yeah, I just thought it was, was good to just talk about it. So we've withdrawn the presentation. All right, thanks. Interest on temporary loans? Um, yeah, we can add uh, that, but that one's ready to vote. <laughs> we already have it. We did, I, I didn't realize you had it. I printed it again today, so you have it twice. Yeah, it dawned on me halfway through the meeting. Right, 752-5900. Make a motion we approve interest temporary loans count 752-5900 or $5,000. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right, so I've given you um, wastewater treatment plant. I had already given you the expense, but I've changed it. So you can you can get rid of the other expense one that you have in your in your binder. Um, what taps? I don't anticipate that we're going to vote anything on this tonight. So how about if I just quickly give you an overview? Yeah. Of it? Does that sound good? Yes, with no motions. Um, so the, the first page you're given is just a recap of how it's how it's going to be voted at town meetings. So you're 
having expected revenues of a million four, um, salaries of 358,000, expenses of 675,000, debt service 600,000, and indirect costs of 69,000. And then I plugged in 300,000 out of our retained earnings, not knowing really how much we're gonna be paying in interest. So it was just, it was just, just my first pass on this really. Um, so let's look at the salaries. That's your next page. I know this is gonna change completely between now and the time of our town meeting, but um, because we're, we're close to hiring a chief operator, but um, there's going to be quite a difference in what he's going to be paid versus what's on our compensation plan. And I don't know how that affects the operators, but what I did do with this budget was just plug in four. We have a chief operator, three um, regular operators, according to what DEP is requiring. And then the other things, the county retirement, the health insurance, the workers comp, all of those were plugged in based on the other budgets that we did earlier, like um, the health insurance budget that Barbara put together, um, the county retirement that she calculated before she left. Those, those are, are pretty well set. Um, so, th so the thing that's gonna change on here is what we're paying these guys. And I have no clue at this point. And I don't know that any of you wanna discuss it because I think you have an executive committee meeting. We do. Night. Yep. So. I have more info, you know, next meeting. So then um, the next page is, is just the regular expenses. And this was a budget that, um, I think this is the only budget I didn't get any numbers from Kevin on. So Chris and Casey and I sat down and went through it in great detail about what they're seeing for expenditures and, and what our history was, what we were spending. And we put together a budget based on that. Um, right or wrong, whether Kevin agrees with it, I don't know, but it seemed reasonable based on all of the information that Chris was giving us about what he was expecting. Uh, just out of curiosity, why the big jump in equipment repair? The, because the old Deerfield plant is really falling apart. So. <laughs> no, I, I know. In the meantime, though, when you have a pump fail or a valve go or something like that, there just seems to be a lot more breaking on that plant. And um, they say we duct tape. Yeah, yeah, a lot of duct tape. And same with same with the um, equipment rental, gone up a little bit, not as much. Electricity seems to be increasing, but we did just also increase the percentage of solar that we're going to apply against at least the 150 Sunderland uh, Road location. The pump station seems to be in pretty good shape right now. Oh, I'm going to knock on some wood at, yeah. at, um, at the uh, Captain Lathrop right now. Uh, since we did those repairs a couple of years ago, um, put that grinder in there. It seems to be doing okay. I mean, I haven't heard anybody running out there in the middle of the night lately, but um, it can still be issues. It's still difficult because of the terrain and everything, but, and that's probably why, you know, he's got that, you know, budget down a little bit for sewer line pump station maintenance. Uh, the sludge, uh, yeah. that's what you brought up, Allison. And, and actually we went through the history of the sludge costs. And I, I know at one point, Kevin was expecting it to go up quite a bit. It didn't go up as much as he was expecting. Yeah. So we brought that, that, that makes sense. line item down to what we thought was more reasonable. We've got a better clarifier now. And I, as soon as their head works comes online, we'll just see dramatic difference in what we do for sludge for sure. And phase two with a thickener as well. That'll, that'll make a big difference. Infiltration and inflow. Um, we increased this because there is a need for pipe replacement. And if we could do it piecemeal as DPC has indicated, 
maybe this 90,000 will help us cover some of those things that we have to do. Anybody have any other questions in regards to this one? So we could just go on to the debt service, which is the next page. Here is just the other part of what I, the rest of it. Yep. So 300,000 for the debt payment and 300,000 for the interest. I'm hoping the interest is gonna be less than this. I'm hoping we don't have to borrow as much as I think we do, but um, it was it was really, really a somewhat halfway educated guess. Yeah. And we've got the, the, the maturing debt, right? We've got the debt that's out there someplace that you used to basically 3%. I said. did. Yeah, two and a half to 3%, just kind of rounded it. Probably a little fat debt. So it would have been nice if it was all at 3%. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm a little nervous. Although if we get a nice premium like we did on that last one, then we won't mm. be won't won't have a problem. But if we get a really nice premium, then we maybe we maybe we pay more down on the uh, on the principal portion of it. Yeah. If it's all in the budget anyway. Where is it? Smith well, are we done? Anybody else have any questions on the sewer? <coughs> Um, Smith vote transportation. We voted this and it did not pass, but we didn't vote any other value to put in. Um, so can we look at Smith vote transportation? Again? There's number? no individual line item, right? It's well, just on this sheet. It's on um, the it's on the last page, on page four of your of your summary. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, and the reason it went down was that. Um, there was discussion about what, whether parents could drive their own kids and there might be some possible savings if you can come to a contract with parents of the two kids two. who are going here. Um, my takeaway from that discussion, this was my opinion, was that Yes, there might be a chance that we could do that and pursue it. It's a lot of effort for not a lot of return when we're already doing so many other things. Um, so, I, I guess dollars for two kids is important. I mean, we could just buy them a car. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pay somebody to drive them. That's the problem. Do they use the car? I don't know how that works with um, with so if they bill us anyway. I I I, I it's doubt a good it, question. It's a really good question. Why yeah. kids yeah. get driven? Yeah, yeah if you look at all the school buses going into Frontier, pretty empty. They're almost all empty. Yeah. It's a good question, but I, I would this, think that they are. Transportation from Deerfield to to Northampton, yeah. yeah. And I believe that it is happening, but we, we should double check that for sure. Well, no, we're getting charged for it and they and they tell us the number of days that they're billing oh, us okay. for. Oh, yes. got it. Yeah. Right. Oh, so we actually only get charged for what actually rides that get taken. I think so, maybe. You, you remember there was one year where the students stopped riding and, and they kept billing us and we refused to pay their payment. Yeah. I don't know whether that was right or not, but we refused. We didn't. Or did, or did the bus go to Northampton? Was it there's anybody on it or not? What's that? Or the, did the vehicle go to Northampton? Was it there's anybody in the I don't know. I don't know not. the answer to that. But it was aren't. when the school told us that the student had left and didn't bill us for that last quarter that we realized that we shouldn't be paying for the transportation. Mm -hmm. What is the? Tra I wasn't here for anything. What is the transportation? Where do they get picked up and what does it look like? I, I assume they get picked up at their home and it goes down to Smithville. Yeah. Yep. The car? Like one of those 
Probably like a, probably a little van. mini bus or something. Or something. It's, 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 it's a like small a, bus. Sure. Yeah, it's a small bus. Okay. Small we do bus. we do check um, periodically to make sure the student is still enrolled in programs that, that are not eligible at Franklin Tech because over the years, um, what's happened is people go to Smith Boat for a specific program. And then if they change, we're not on the hook um, if the, unless they stay in that specific program. So if they change interest, then we have the ability to stop payment as well. That's on the tuition waiver. Um, so would anybody like to make a motion for Smith Boat transportation? We have a second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? On this? Yeah. Um, I mean, okay, this is going to sound really crass, but <laughs> Pioneer Valley Transportation Authority runs from Northampton. Let me just give them a bus stop. Yeah, yeah they're it's right. mandated. What is it mandated? I mean, this it, is it is. It's mandated by the state. Yeah, DESE, I think, requires. I, I believe so. I mean, but yes, they, it they is. Provide transportation or that we reimburse yes. them. For transportation. Yes. Yes. They got there on their own and we reimbursed them. It would probably be less. I think we have to have a change. I mean, I just know the school has been careful when it's not an expert, but I believe we have to have a contract <laughs> with basically guaranteeing transportation right. for them at, before it happens. So, like, I think the state of Jackson requires us to have a contract with the facility. We would have to. Anything we did would have to be in agreement yeah. with the parents, uh, not yeah. the students, unless they were 18. Yeah. And, and it would need to be a contract for the service. I, mean, I, I know they've done that in other cases. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> they could take it. I mean, <laughs> Can you? 10,000 ahead, they could take a taxi, yeah. Uber. Yeah. yeah. Casey, go ahead. But before any of that happens, even before discussing a, any kind of agreement, which you can enter into, the family has to agree to not use the seat on the bus. The seat has to be provided. It's very difficult to get an agreement like that because most, most people that are going to a vocational school, understand the town has to provide the transportation. Any other questions, anybody? Is, is, there, tra is there transportation in the Franklin County Tech budget? Yes. There is, okay. Yes. Wondering yes. That, that's supposed to be 100% reimbursable, but of course it never is. We're, we're gonna move on and not talk yeah. about that right now. Um, anybody else have any talk about Smith Vote transportation? <laughs> anybody on finance committee? Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. You need I to gotta move go us get along. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, moved and seconded for twenty three thousand five hundred for Smith Vote transportation. Any further questions? All in favor? Opposed? That's six one zero. That passes. Um, so that I don't have time to talk about this because, because I didn't even get my kid. Um, the only other thing I, I had in my mind to talk about was when we get to the bottom of this, we have that $57,000 or whatever it is left for, um, for capital, mm -hmm. right? Is that, is that where we are? Am I accurate mm -hmm. in that? Something um, like that. Do we want to, as this is a finance committee question, do we want to ask the select board and the town administration to go back and look at further savings within the stuff we've already discussed? Yeah. yeah. Do we have a dollar value or specific items or? I got some specific items. Yeah. Yeah. better structured to get a sense of how much savings we're looking to achieve with this being how much capital we've built so far. Um, if 
we have a sense of that number of what we really want to see happen. Then we have a sense of how much we can have in the budget. And rather than the finance committee pulling through and picking out items that don't come right to us, I would feel much more comfortable having department heads, the select board, the you know, friends, that, like people who are very familiar with what these items because it's already been, we're all, we're going to be, there's going to be um, it in itself somewhere. Um, and that's and that's what we attach to it. I think it's just the things off the other day. So I would suggest folks start with figuring out that goal number, which maybe we can do one meeting uh, to pick out to look at, and then reflect, to see if we can find that amount of money in the budget and whether that I, I, I think an, another consideration of all of us is how much free cash do we want to leave on the table for the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Our revenues are looking pretty good. Um, expenditures, I guess I haven't really paid that much attention to the expenditures other than other than everything is it seems to be tracking mm -hmm. okay, you know, just overall. So right now, the revenue sheet I gave you is saying that we keep back 250,000, but you know, we don't have to keep back 250,000. Do we wanna keep back 150,000? Do we wanna keep back 200,000? That might give you more money also to spend on some of those capital items that we might need. <laughs> and we could also look at using our stabilization funds. Correct. Yeah. 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 Or right. it occurred to me we could reduce this year's reserve fund contribution. Not dip into so the, the reserve, reserve fund, fund, but don't fund. put as much in. Okay. I see. Put Instead like of 100,000, let's say maybe yeah. put in 80,000 instead. Yes. Or yeah. 50. Okay. I that did make me a little uncomfortable because we use quite a bit of it, and that's our emergency. If something bizarre happens during the year, that's our emergency that we can use without having to go back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and if we don't use it, it just goes into free cash anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, just a, a side note: um, we have spent almost ninety thousand for the July storm, but you'll notice on the sheet that I'm only There's requesting only 70. seventy thousand because we found. Um, uh, actually, it was a suggestion by our chief, Chief Pachori, um, to look at another uh, fund that we had that we could spend some of that money out of mm -hmm. uh, because of where the the um, the um, damage was. Where the damage was. Right, yeah. exactly. So um, we did move some of the expenditure to that fund. So that helped. That gave us another twenty thousand that we would have had. So. Mm. I agree with Allison. We need to know what capital items we have to buy. When did they say they thought they would have that list ready? Well, well meeting I, Thursday. I know they? that they weren't available to give it to us. I think they're meeting Thursday. Okay. To just go, I think they're meeting here, right? Thursday to kind of get that. Yes, ready. we're meeting Thursday to hope we're going to just prioritize everything and not worry about where the money's coming from. Yeah. And then we'll discuss it from there, I guess. Okay. It's a really, it's very difficult to figure out when you don't have a ballpark of some numbers, but we're just, we'll prioritize stuff and then we'll have to decide what we want to do. Okay. But can I just add, I had my hand up on, I really don't want to cut the reserve fund. Um, honestly, we can't, you can't predict what's happening with COVID at all. And I really was in favor of increasing the reserve fund at least to 120,000, 125,000. But if, it, you know, obviously no one wants to do that, but I certainly wouldn't want to cut it from 100. We just don't know what's happening over the year. You know, we just have so many emergencies now. I, I would really like to ask you all to look at the Board of Health salary. Okay. Um, he, Alex got a better offer somewhere and left us, um, but is um, still working with us part-time. And is there is there another way to do that position? Can you fill it with like a couple of part-time part -time people? <laughs> and, uh, Probably. <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> probably or something well that that could look at and um i, I don't really want to go through the yeah. whole discussion i mean that's for you guys but we'll do but that just we'll look at that look at that we'll keep that line and others um okay do you want a motion to adjourn no Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was wondering where the uh, COVID, the government's going to give us money for COVID, right? No, we had we they had gotten that money and had to spend it by. Oh, it's already used. Yeah. yeah. So no more coming in. No. None. No. And we have we had the ARPA money. That's yep. different. Isn't that the same that's thing? Different. That's the American yes. Rescue Re Rescue Plan. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Plan. Is that all come in too? Uh, we've half gotten of half of it so far, so we should get the other half probably in June, July. Is that in your revenue? No. It's in a fund, a special fund for it. So then that's money we can use, right? Nope. We're, we're going to use uh, it on the Larry lot. <laughs> so it, it really it really depends, and not to be smug, but uh, so it um, right now it's in a grant program controlled by the select board to to spend and then uh the other possibility is to turn that into lost revenue and turn it into free cash but um well you can you, it's a little complex how yeah, much is it gonna, i was gonna say like, i think one four i think when it's all said and done we don't one, have one four I, but I one four million mm -hmm. yeah what one well almost 1.5 million yeah um so the way I understand it, I think we can claim all of it as revenue replacement, right? But then spend some of it on the capital items or things, the projects that you want to do. Um, at least that's my. Well, it is. It is. It's. It's a little bit up in the air because it wasn't that way, and the and the federal government keeps changing the rules. They finally solidified it, but it's not solidified until April, mm -hmm. and then uh, the final rule is out. But I think after April. Uh, towns can decide to before you had that you know massively intensive grant you know writing and and documentation and could only be used for certain things there they gave towns um, smaller towns the ability to um, re use it as replacement revenue say that they've had a loss mm -hmm. fund a current budget with it and then turn and then that would just roll into free cash and then we would use it how you know how how we wanted to so I, I guess some of it's a little bit of a power play right does the select board want to use it on our initiatives that we want or do we want to turn it into free cash and then have a lot more um ho hoops to jump through to do the projects that we all want to do i think you know my my thought is to have a frank discussion on what the priorities of the town are and, and how we can best benefit the majority of the town there are a lot of towns that are paying us you know different employees and you know uh, grocery store workers and people on the front lines and all. I, i'm more about using we our plan was to use it on one specific large project that could get most benefit to the town like the like doing the leary lot you'd have economic development you would have minimal requirements as far as having to do all the grant reporting um the other option is to turn it into free cash and go through all the hoops that if deal we, with free this cash. Is if we put it in the free cash then no we could vote it for the leary lot yeah, later yeah. You, so you could, could or you we couldn't could, we you know could decide, so that we it, could decide how we want to use it that yes, way you, the, yes the, a so lot I, more I people guess decide I, I think when we're, we're sitting and talking <laughs> about what are we going to do i think we need to include the 1.4 million but it's as, not your decision to do that so and we it, don't have the 1.4 yet but right, it's your yeah. decision that's right right okay but you're you're representing the town that's correct so um so I, I'll take your I'll take your advice and listen to it. <laughs> okay, okay. I think then the finance committee needs to consider nope. the 1.4 million. No, you can't. Because it's not it's not there to consider yet until we turn it into free cash. Right? I think I I know, but I th I think the finance I yeah, think the, right. I think, we need slushies I, I for everything. The finance I think the finance committee can suggest yes, you can. Used to, yeah. be used for, yes for absolutely you can and i think as yep. a committee just, just as that, a, you know that waste 
key in that they have. So <laughs> would you write out your uh, what you'd like to do? Put your yeah, we have a suggestion box. I, I just think I think as a committee we should consider well, it. You know, well, there, there is a lot to Agreed. consider there, and I'm uh, absolutely happy to listen and kind of think about those things because there there is pluses and minuses to doing both things. Right. And right. and we should weigh them all and figure out the best way to go forward. And obviously a joint decision is a lot better. Yeah. You know, it's Agreed. wasn't that many years ago, you know, this all this budget stuff was done with your own silo. Yeah. You know, now at least we're coming together and talking about these things. We might not always agree on them, but at least we're talking about them getting it out. I think and that's important, yeah. uh, which is something we didn't have that many years ago. I mean, it wasn't that many correct. years ago. Every time Skip and I looked at each other, we were probably yelling at each other. <laughs> that's okay. That's healthy. Yeah. Well, as long as we can talk about because it. <laughs> doing your finance, the select board was doing theirs. Brenda was doing hers. Then we never got together before really the town This is meeting. a much better system. It's much and, better the way we're doing we it now. And when it comes to the APRA fund, you know, obviously we're going to need input from everybody. I agree. Stuff. Yeah. It's not something that the three of us are just going to decide. I'm sure we'll have a lot of discussion with you guys on it. I, okay. But those, those two. But, oh, sorry. <laughs> I move we adjourn. All right. Those favor? Aye. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> All right. We adjourned at 740. You want to adjourn the oh, yeah. A motion to adjourn the select board? Hey, I'll make that motion. Well, I'll second it then. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn. Thank you, Aye, David. David.